let's clear up one of these main misunderstandings. So some of you guys may have already heard of the Smith and Munn 1948 Act. That's usually the act that people propagate as the origination of where America made propaganda illegal. But that's not true. There's always a misconception behind it. And the other misconception is that people try to allude that in 2012, when there was a bill passed by Obama, that was a modernization of that 1948 act in 2012, that Obama legalized propaganda. But that's all false. And I want to clear that up before we get started into this, because I can already tell people listening to this will probably say, oh, no. It was never illegal. It was banned in 1948 and Obama made it legal in 2012. It's not true. So the 1948 act itself was specifically targeted towards certain propaganda that was going to be distributed to exclusively foreign audiences. So there was the BBG and Voices of America. These were specific broadcasters that was supposed to propagate information about the United States, its policies and things that were going on, but to foreign audiences. So what the 1948 Act was trying to do was to say all that foreign information that's being propagated, it cannot be distributed domestically. And of course, though, if you were to ask the government, are you pushing propaganda? They're going to say no. But it really comes down to what do you mean by propaganda? If you mean what propaganda is simply being a tool of rhetoric, a means to persuade individuals of your side of an argument, but utilizing straw man propositions to make the other side look weak, then of course they're utilizing propaganda. Of course, people are hyperbolicizing and the government is hyperbolicizing their cap capacities, capabilities, their infrastructures, everything. Every country does that. So to think that the government wouldn't be doing such things is nonsense. So the 1948 Act did not make propaganda illegal. I want to make that clear. Propaganda has always been legal and it always will be legal. And the 1948 Act only restricted the propaganda that was being given to foreign audiences not to be propagated to domestic or U.S. citizens to domestic audiences. And that statement alone affirms the fact that the United States government used propaganda. All they wanted to do was make a strong dichotomy, a dividing line on which audiences receive which type of propaganda. So there is a type of propaganda that's given to domestic audiences. And then there's a certain type of propaganda that's given to foreign audiences. But that's all it was doing. And it just wanted to prevent them from overlapping. Clearly, there's a reason behind that, probably because the foreign audience propaganda was a lot more hyperbolicized and a lot more radical. We'd have to assume so because the 1948 Act also restricted individuals from receiving any of those broadcasts, even if you applied for an information act. Like even if you wanted to get that information, you were not allowed to receive it. So comes along the 2012 Modernization Act of this Smith and Munn Act. So what happens, what Obama passed was the ability to allow, just revert back to what was before 1948, which was basically allowing the United States government to propagate, not directly, only by information upon requ request, but allowing the propaganda that was given to foreign audiences can be given now to domestic audiences upon request. So if you apply for uh, an information request or information act and you say, I want this information, the government now will give you this information and give you those direct broadcasts. But they're not, they're making it clear, we are not directly broadcasting to you, at least that's what they're saying, this propaganda. It's still exclusive to foreign audiences and domestic audiences. There's a strong dichotomy between those two. And so that's all it is. And I want to make that clear. Obama didn't allow propaganda to come back. All Obama did. And this isn't because, uh, you know, we need to praise Obama or anything. It's just I'm trying to 
fix propaganda because this whole rhetoric itself is propaganda. That's how stupid this is. I'm trying to fix propaganda, which there was a whole movement of propaganda to blame Obama for allowing propaganda. And this is so stupid. And it's and I think it's even more stupid to think that people were believing that America was so was so genuine and honest that they were saying in 1948, we want to make sure we don't push out propaganda. Bro, we're about to hit the Cold War. We 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 hitting Korean War. We're hitting Vietnam. We're gonna we just this whole thing is absolutely crazy that anybody be even bought into any of this. But another thing that people don't realize about this is that there were many agencies that were disqualified from even having any participation in this 1948 act. A lot of people don't even know the Department of Defense was immune. Any government agency that wasn't directly involved in public diplomacy, they were immune. The military was immune. The military makes propaganda to this day. You see those massive aircraft carriers and everything and they're just trying to get you this emotional feel like we have the greatest military in the world and guess what china's doing and russia's doing they're doing the same thing making the same type of videos pushing out propaganda and propaganda isn't supposed to be the tool of truth it's the tool of persuasion which we'll find out through the mastery of bernays which was initialized with the cpi the Committee on Public Information with Creel and Benes and all the other boys. But I just wanted to clear up the air because there's so many times people, they get this confused or they just regurgitate this. Propaganda still continues today. Propaganda will always continue. Propaganda has always been legal. And the only thing that changed was now we can distribute what was exclusive to foreign audiences the domestic audiences upon request. That's it. And this is to help balance the playing field to foreign countries that want to disseminate propaganda in the United States. So if Russia or China wants to pro propagate propaganda here in the United States, America can also try to rebuttal that utilizing certain propaganda that was exclusive to foreign audiences to domestic audiences to rebuttal some of this domestic, this foreign, some of these foreign propagandas. But basically just leveling the playing field. Because if you're a Chinese government, you're probably targeting Chinese audiences and those ch in America. So if there's Chinese audiences or Russian audiences in America, then the Chinese government is targeting the Chinese citizens in America. And the Russian government is targeting Russian citizens in America. Because, you know, if you're a foreign person, you probably have satellite TV and you watch proprietary language channels for your country. And those are disseminating certain type of propaganda about America, even though you're living in America. And so America can propagate Chinese language propaganda to, to battle that dissemination from China or to battle that dissemination from Russia in Russian language or in Chinese language. So that's basically the whole concept of what was going on in 2012. It was a means to level the playing field. It wasn't the idea that somehow America never pushed out propaganda to its citizens and Obama allowed it all to start again. Propaganda has always been legal. Propaganda will always be legal. And nothing's going to stop that. Rightly so. Every country has to protect its interests. So, so be it. Truce in 76.